Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and before I get to my movie review, I'm just going to let you know that I now have high speed internet, so I can finally upload all my videos on YouTube extremely fast. Because most of the time, whenever I upload a video on YouTube, it takes a lot of time to upload the whole thing. Like, it might take uh, a couple hours to continue, or sometimes, depends on how small the video is. It could take like almost 30 minutes, so that's cool. Maybe even a little longer than that, but who knows. And if you forgive me on this one, you're going to be hearing a lot of beeping coming from that stupid smoke detector, because it's pissing me off already. But what can you do? I might have to change the battery pretty soon, so forgive me on this one. It's I know it's annoying, but you're going to be hearing it for the rest of the video, so... I had no choice. I tried to turn it off. It just keeps on doing it. Like it's doing right now. So anyway, I'm about to review the film that just got released on Blu-ray and DVD. And I hope I get the film pretty soon because I really want to. It's definitely one of the best movies of 2016. I put that on my top of, of the best movie list that I came up with. And, of course, because it stars one of my favorite actresses, Amy Adams. The film is called Arrival, which had been nominated for eight Academy Awards. And, sadly, it could have been nine, but the Academy is too stupid sometimes that they had to keep snubbing everything. It's, it's too bad, though, because she did a very good job. All the critics have praised her performance, and I definitely praised her, too, in this movie, because she's really good, as usual. Um, whatever is good or bad. I mean, Amy Adams is definitely one of the most beautiful actresses to date. You know, she's a redhead, of course, as we know it. But hey, I've been a big fan of her ever since Enchanted. I mean, that's another reason why I fell in love with her ever since. Yeah, I know she's married, but hey, we all felt this way. But, okay, okay, <laughs> back to the track here. Well, anyway... She was about to be nominated for an Academy Award, because I know she's been nominated several times. She hasn't won a single Oscar, and that's a shame, because she did a very good job in this movie, and it shows. But anyway, Arrival's about a, a linguistic a teacher who's experiencing um, an alien invasion that's happening around the world. And she's chosen for an expert to actually make contact with the aliens. The movie stars, once again, Amy Adams, along with Jeremy Renner, who's been in several films, including The Avengers. Uh, Forrest Whitaker, a you know, great actor, been in several other movies uh, throughout his entire career. Along with Michael Stubbar, Ty Mai, and Mark O'Brien. It's written by Eric Hessener, who's the same screenwriter who, believe it or not, had wrote one of the worst remakes of all time in 2010 called A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, which is based on the original film by Wes Craven, you know, the late great Wes Craven, a legendary uh, horror director as we know it. And I know he was the writer of the film Hours, which is by um, the late, great Paul Walker. But this is a good film that he finally wrote, even though he waited for years and years to finally do an adaptation, which is called Story of Your Life by Ted Chain, yeah, which is from 1998. And it's directed by Denise Villeneuve, who's the same director who gave us Prisoners, and Sicario. I guess stop beeping now. <laughs> Thank God. Anyway, the movie begins when we meet a language teacher named Dr. Louise Banks, who's played by Amy Adams, who once had a daughter that she cares so much that, sad to say, she passed away at the age of 16 due to cancer and while she was lecturing at the university 
she begins to discover that 12 extraterrestrial spacecrafts had arrived on Earth and those spacecrafts that we have look almost like those uh, cone egg-shaped types as you can see so suddenly US Army Colonel Weber who's played by Forrest Whitaker along with um, physicist Ann Donnelly had joined uh, Louise to go on a mission to actually decipher their alien language just to find out why did they arrive so they went inside a military camp along with the team that's in Montana that's actually near one of the spacecrafts that's on the corner they started to make contact by by two seven limb aliens yeah they look almost like squids with legs uh, something out of spider legs and once they open up they do have webbed um, fins that almost look like an octopus in a way they actually make contact by creating a circle and they even show um, some of the the blobs that they put in just uh, trying to find out uh, what they're about to say so they come in whole different languages so that's where Louise and Ann along with uh, Weber and the rest of the team had begun to discover and found out about this and why they came here and they're trying to figure out the, the language right there by using all the vocabularies and all of that they also named the aliens simply as we know it the comedy team themselves Abbott and Costello <laughs> yeah it's kinda of like in that movie a uh, big miracle where they actually named uh, all the uh, yeah remember that film from 2012 with Drew Barrymore where um, they actually named them after at the cartoon characters uh, from the Flintstones yeah Pebbles Bam Bam you know, Fred and all that yeah or Wilma okay well anyway but Louis discovered the written language of complicated circle symbols that they had with the blobs and they try to figure it out uh, each and every kind of vocabulary that they have yeah, and I know I'm repeating myself but I'm trying to you know, keep up with it as, as I remember but then they begin to figure it out um, one of those languages and then they they try to know what they meant when they started using the when they translated it from the computer and all of this where they suddenly found one answer which actually turns out to be called offer weapon which would have been a similar transition to use weapon which is considered to be a transition for for tool and technology which means that some people thought that this might be like a term that it's going to be ready for an attack or a war against um, the entire world so suddenly the US soldiers actually plant some explosives in the spacecraft while Louise and Anne had re-entered just to find out what's going on here and they're trying to find some more contact between the aliens and they're trying to create a much more complex message to them so that way they could figure it out just before the explosives had went off and they wound up getting pushed over filled with gravity which leads to a bigger problem was when China under their military is actually planning on an attack with uh, Russia and and Britain actually working together as a team to, to stop the spacecrafts and the aliens from attacking the entire world but Louise had to rush back inside the spacecraft to find out what's going on here and this is where she begins to discover the secret that's about to happen and everything that was going on 
afterwards. So, not to give away too much of the film, but that's what the film was going for. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, this is definitely a sci-fi drama that we definitely expected to see. And it's definitely one of the better sci-fi movies that we got that year alone, in 2016. Because we had some other sci-fi movies, even if it happened a couple years uh, before that. Because I know even before 2016, we had uh, other space-themed films that we got and other sci-fi movies. Like The Martian, Interstellar, Gravity, you name it. And of course, even before all of those movies, we even had Moon. But in 2016, we just had two movies that were really bad. Passengers and Independence Day Resurgence. And I believe there was also an independent movie that came out uh, that year as well. But I never saw it. Never even heard of it either. Uh, but... Yeah, it might have been an independent movie. But this movie, to me, actually works. Um, the aliens were well made, well done. The, the special effects were impressive. I love the ships that they created. I mean, it can be any other kind that they choose, but I'm glad they did it. Uh, and this is definitely another good performance by Amy Adams, because she definitely plays the role very well. Definitely shows exactly how an actress like her can do. Um, Jeremy Renner did a great job too playing the physicist who um, trying to figure it out the language that's, that the aliens were talking about. He even did his narration as well, trying to discover what's going on just by um, focusing on all the circular patterns uh, that the aliens had created those messages of, of vocabularies and all that. But Amy Adams actually did a great job um, definitely showing exactly what all these words mean and all that and it, sh it shows. She could definitely be a great teacher for a linguist. And Forrest Whitaker did a great job too uh, playing the, the colonel and he was uh, definitely uh, begins to figure it out what's going on and all of that. However, Michael Starbarge as Agent David Harper is truly an asshole in the movie. And I mean a really big asshole. I mean he was the one who wanted the he didn't want this to happen. They wanted they were trying to figure out what's going on before they were going to be ready for a war that was about to happen. He was almost ready to kill her. Because Louise just stole a satellite phone just trying to make contact with Shane. Which happens to be the Chinese military officer. that um, Where she actually had flashbacks of her daughter. Um, I know she... And just to call this whole attack off and everything. Yeah, I know, that. that's what happened towards the end of the movie. But then, there was a scene in the movie where, just when they're about to escape, you know, they were leaving camp, just ready for an attack or something like that, that um, Louise had suddenly um, figured out, and she had several flashbacks, a lot of visions that she's been getting, uh, everything from her daughter to to everything that's going to happen in the future, you know, some of those predictions that she was getting and everything that was happening, or even when she was going inside uh, the spacecraft, even with that small spacecraft where she went inside and she begins to see uh, all the blobs, those black blobs that that's, um, she was about to actually catch right there in her hands by the aliens. And I love that effect where they took the shuttle uh, filled with the entire team going up on top of the spacecraft and they they jump out of it and because they had the gravity that's being pulled through and they started walking onto the right 
corner so that way they can go straight to where they'd be able to meet the aliens and so ready to get some contact right here I thought that was really cool and um, I heard that there was like several um, issues with the film where the, the writer um, Eric uh, Hesewer was decided to um, change the ending to the film because it was going to go for sort of a different ending or it seemed like it was going to be in connection with uh, the movie Interstellar but that never happened so there you go <laughs> I, I, I totally agree I thought the ending that they chose was so much better I'm glad they did that I mean because it is based on a short story uh, story of your life and he worked so hard on that too so he did a great job anyway great score too that was done by that was done by Johan Johansson along with Max Richter I mean this is where they actually created that beat sort of like an alien uh, like an alien uh, doo-wop type of music that they chose I thought that pretty yeah, I thought that worked pretty well, and and some nice cinematography by Bradford Young definitely captures everything that went into it. It, it had a dark feel to it. Uh, it has a lot of great shots of of all the spacecraft. So it's amazing. It's a it's a great film. I definitely recommend it. It's it's worth. Um, surprisingly, it was a a smash hit. Uh, surprisingly, it did very well at the box office. Uh, actually, earned 195 million dollars out of its 47 million budget. It definitely worked and shows. So, check out the film. So anyway, I give Arrival five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.